Hello, welcome to World War II Hungary. Today, I'm going to be talking about the niche incident. Niche is in Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia is not in Hungary. Why am I making a video about this? Well, this topic has interested me for quite some time. I have a lot of information on it. And a well-known YouTube channel recently released an episode about this filled with errors. So in this video, I will correct them. As usual, the sources will be in the description, and I would like to give a special thanks to Gabor Horvath, who helped out with this video. The Niche incident is famous because it is one of the best-known events where US and Soviet aircraft mistakenly fought each other during the Second World War. The event took place on November 7th, 1944. However, there are a few common misconceptions about the Niche incident, such as, the incident remains highly classified and little information is known, it was the only time when U.S. and Soviet aircraft fought each other during the war, misconceptions about the total losses and the types of aircraft which fought, and misconceptions about the visibility of markings on Soviet ground vehicles. So, what is the real truth behind the Niche incident? Led by Colonel Clarence T. Edwinson, 60 P-38 Lightnings took off for a strafing mission consisting of the 95th, 96th, and 97th Fighter Squadrons, all from the 82nd Fighter Group of the 15th U.S. Air Force. Off the ground by 0857 hours, two returned due to mechanical failures. Over the target area, 16 Lightnings strafed between Sigencia and Novi Pazar between 1015 and 1040 hours, while 21 strafed between Rashka, Mitrovic, and Pristina between 1020 and 1130 hours. The 97th Fighter Squadron provided top cover for the other American planes. On the Soviet side, the 6th Guards Rifle Corps command units were the last units to arrive at Pirot Station just outside of Niche, and they set off in a vehicle column from the station at 0800 hours Moscow time to the town of Paratsin to set up communications with the rest of the Corps. Later in the day, when the rest of the column was moving up to Paratsin, they were attacked by the Americans from the air around the town of Aleksinak. But how could this happen? The Americans were farther to the west and not near Nish, right? Well, despite Colonel Edwinson firmly believing he navigated towards the correct target, gun camera footage eventually proved that he actually mistook one of the roads used for navigating the Yugoslavian landscape and ended up in the valley in which Nish was located and fired upon the Soviet column. The lightnings flew approximately 50 kilometers behind enemy lines and into Soviet-controlled territory. During this late stage in the war, it was not uncommon for the Soviets and her allies to use Axis vehicles, and as such, it is entirely possible that the column moving up to Paratsin used such vehicles, leading to the Americans to fire upon them. The instinct of a pilot to fire upon the recognized shape of Axis armor, especially when they believe they are attacking in the correct location, would conceivably override a small red star symbol only visible at relatively close range. In the air at the time were at least nine Yak-9 fighters of the 866th Fighter Regiment from the 288th Fighter Division of the 17th Air Army. Upon spotting the American attack, these Yaks engaged the American Lightnings in order to protect their ground forces, thus resulting in the air battle between the two Allied forces. The Soviets reported 27 Lightnings in their airspace when things began to heat up and the battle broke out with losses on both sides. Partway through, 17th Air Army Commander Vladimir Sudets ordered the pair of Captain Koldunov and Lieutenant Krasyukov to take off and take all measures to prevent an engagement in the air. Because at that moment, more lightnings from the 97th Squadron approached the Niche airfield. Remember that the 97th Fighter Squadron was providing top cover for the other strafing lightnings. In addition to the already mentioned Soviet planes, there were four Yak-9s from the 897th Fighter Squadron as well in the air. Though since the nationality of the enemy was already established, these Yaks did not enter battle. The battle ended only after Captain Koldunov, risking his own life, flew up alongside Colonel Edwinson's P-38 and communicated that they were Russians. 
So what were the losses resulting from this tragic event? In the air, both the Americans and the Soviets lost exactly three planes apiece, and both lost two pilots killed. Here are the aircraft types lost. Here are the airmen lost. And we even know the serial number of the individual aircrafts. Returning to the ground, the losses suffered by the 6th Guards Rifle Corps are also known. Within the six strafing passes made by the Americans, the Corps lost 30 personnel killed, including the Corps' commander, General Kotov. Another 38 were wounded, and 17 vehicles were set ablaze. After the Niche incident, Colonel Edwinson did not report these events. Rather, he took recreational leave in Rome. And only after the Soviets contacted the Americans in Italy about this tragedy did he come forward. Edwinson was relieved of his duties and was reassigned to the U.S. without prejudice. Niche wasn't the only incident when the two allies clashed in the air. No, no. Another well-known clash occurred on the 18th of March, 1945, by an airfield along the Elbe. Here, the 359th Fighter Group claimed many Soviet fighters in another American strike, this time over the Zakarik airfield occupied by the Soviets. On the same day, the 352nd Fighter Group lost a P-51 to Soviet fighters as well. I have really, really big things planned for 2022, and I hope you will stick around for them. Have a Merry Christmas, and I'll see you in the new year. Thank you for checking out this video. For more World War II history content, please check out my other episodes.